Potholes and extensive shattering are visible evidence that a parking lot has reached the end of its life. When shattering has become so extensive that it covers the majority of a parking surface, it is time for a two-inch asphalt overlay. In most cases, when an overlay is required, so too are base repairs. Areas of asphalt that have become so loose that chunks are coming out and potholes are forming will require base repairs prior to paving. We use a rotomill attachment or a slot cutter to grind the edges of each base repair. This makes it easier to remove the damaged asphalt. Once the mill grinds up the edges, the inner portion of the damaged area is pulled away from the rock base and hauled off to the dump. The underlying rock base is then compacted with a vibratory roller. After compacting the rock base, the area is backfilled with hot base mix asphalt and rolled again for compaction. If base repairs are not done before a lot is overlaid, in time the same potholing problems will occur, even on the new lot. We prepare these weakened areas before paving so that premature potholing will not occur in the future. Depending on how damaged the surface is, our estimators may have base repairs included in their bid to overlay the lot, or if the condition of the existing asphalt is marginal, they may have the base repairs set up as an add-on option. The worst areas will generally be included in the overlay bid, and the base repair cost for the moderately damaged areas are provided as add-on options. Base repairs are always recommended, but we realize that some budgets don't allow for more extensive base repairs. Once the base repairs have been completed, it's time to prepare the lot for the overlay. If there are concrete wheel stops on the lot, the wheel stops are removed from the lot and set to the side, or hauled away if they are broken. In areas where asphalt joins concrete, like entrance aprons and sidewalks, the asphalt is rotomilled down so that the newly finished asphalt surface will be flush with the surrounding concrete. If we do not do this, we invite water flow problems and trip hazards once the job is complete. After all base repairs and rotomilling have been completed, the lot is swept to remove loose debris. After sweeping, a primer is applied to the surface. The primer is a glue that helps the new asphalt stick to the old asphalt. On certain lots, we recommend the installation of a wedge course or leveling course of asphalt prior to installing the 2-inch overlay. If a lot has low spots or water ponding areas, installing a leveling course will ensure a smoother, drier, and stronger finished surface. In applying a wedge course, we are essentially paving the lot, or a portion of the lot, twice. We set the depth indicator on the paving machine on 0 inches. In applying the wedge course, we are scraping over the high spots and filling the low spots on the lot. Asphalt is forced into or wedged into the cracks in the asphalt lot. Then, when we apply the 2-inch overlay, we are paving over a smoother, stronger base. Finally, the lot is ready to be overlaid. The crew uses state-of-the-art self-propelled pavers as well as hand tools to finesse the mix to the desired shape and thickness. The paver generally moves in a straight line as asphalt mix is dumped from the heated truck bed into the paver hopper. The mix is moved to the screed via a series of conveyors and augers. The operator uses his controls to adjust the width of each pass and to direct the flow of asphalt around obstacles. An overlay, at its most basic level, is a series of paver passes which are 9 to 15 feet wide. The area where two paver passes meet is called a seam or a joint. It is critical that these joints stay as hot as possible so that the mix on each side of the joint can be fused together. Invariably, seams are where the first cracks appear in a new overlay because they are the weakest portion of the overlay. Loot stick skill, as well as crew speed, is the primary defense against premature cracking at the seams. We keep premature seam cracking to a minimum because our crews are so experienced and work so fast. As the paver moves along down each pass, a series of vibratory rollers are close behind, compacting the new mix and thus making it take its new form. 
When rolling, it is important to compact in varying directions and use different size rollers. There are two goals to rolling, compaction and providing a smooth finish. Our experienced roller men take care to ensure there are no roller marks or slight lifts in the new surface. These slight imperfections may cause water flow problems, trip hazards, and general unsightliness. The new lot is rolled for compaction many times over to ensure the highest quality. Our final step in the project is to paint parking designations on the lot. The crew uses chalk lines to lay out the parking scheme to the customer's specifications. Next, they place the wheel stops that were set aside earlier in the project or new ones if needed. They line them up with their chalk lines and pin them in place using short lengths of rebar. Finally, they use their line striping machines to paint the lines and symbols on the lot. After about an hour, the paint is dry and the lot is ready to be opened.